Hey what is up guys, this is Eli for MoboxGraphics.com and in this video we are going to create some kind of glitchy or abstract stuff. That's kind of the best way to call it. So for this whole video there is no specific way to do one thing or get one specific end result. It is mostly focused on experimenting with some values and some angles where you are viewing the objects from. But I'm still going to show you some basic stuff to get started. Also, as always, you can download these files on Patreon. So a first thing you could do is getting any kind of spline. But let's just get a circle to start with. Let's also get a second one and make this one very small. So something like half a centimeter. That way we can drag both of them inside of a sweep object. So we have this actual circle when we render. We are going to create a luminance material for this. I will stick with the black and white values for now. And now we want to get some glitchy stuff on this circle. So what you could do is going to MoGraph and add an effector and add the random effector. Let's drag this under the circle. So that means it isn't only limited to cloners and stuff. It can also be applied on a spline like this circle. And the first thing we need to do is making sure the deformer is set to point. So we can deform the points. That way you see some stuff is going on, but it isn't exactly looking the best just yet. And also if we press play, it is not moving at all, but we want to move it. So go back to effector. And under here you have the random mode. We need to change this from random to noise. That way it will move and also look better. But if you would use Gaussian, for example, it isn't moving. But um, I think turbulence is also moving. So that's another option, which looks more electric in my opinion. But let's go for noise. You can also change the speed down here if you want to. And also if you want to affect how it is being moved or how the points are being moved, you can go to parameter and down here you can see the position is being moved by default. And that's a good thing because the scale and the rotation wouldn't even affect the points because a point cannot exactly be rotated or scaled. It wouldn't make a difference. So you can only play with the position of stuff. And as you can see, if you increase a value, it will get more dramatic. But one thing what you can see when you play this is that it isn't exactly loopable. So the random effector is very easy to use, but you can't make a loop of it. It's just not really possible unless you would go back here at the effector and decrease the strength every time at the end and the beginning. But that would give you a perfect circle again and that isn't exactly very smooth at all. So there is an alternative to this. I'm just going to copy and paste my sweep object and get rid of this random effector. And what you could get as an alternative effector is getting this shader one. So drag that under the circle as well. And you're going to set the deformation to point again. But this time you cannot go under effector and get the noise there. But you will need to go to the shading tab and add the noise in here. So let's get this noise for example. And let's see if anything is moving. And you can see it is not. And that is because under the parameter tab you can see the defaults by this one are set on the scale value, so not on the position. So let's disable this and go to position. And we can enter it here. That way you can see it is actually being deformed, but not animated yet. So one more thing we need to do, and that's why it's more complex than the random effector, is going back to the shading tab and getting inside of the noise channel. And down here you have something that can set the animation. So let's set an animation speed of 2. But you can see it is not exactly looping. So that is why there is this loop period option. And normally you would think my timeline is 90 frames. So I enter 90 in this one. But that is not the case. You actually need to enter the value of seconds in time we have. So this timeline is set at 30 frames per second. So that means we have 3 seconds of time on this timeline. So let's enter that, 3 seconds. And that way you can see this is a perfect loop. So it's up to you what you do with this. Um, I'm not going to use this one, I'm just going to stick with the random effector because I think this one looks just a little better. 
and also we are going to add more glitch effects to this anyway that way it will not even matter if it is very smooth looping or not so one more thing i want to show you guys with this random effector is that you can adjust the fall off so right now it is set to infinite but you can also set this to something like a uh, sphere and if you drag this around you can see it only affects what is inside of this sphere so I'm just going to disable this again because I like how it moves on the whole circle. But now I would like to add some more detail to this uh, more interesting animation. So what you could do is adding the sweep object in a cloner. And you can set it at linear like it is right now. But instead of moving it, we are going to undo that. And we're just going to make it rotate per step. So let's just increase this slightly and add a few more of the clones. That way you can see we're starting to get some interesting stuff, especially if it is moving. So it's up to you what you do with this. You can also play around with some very small differences in the scaling, that way it gets even more interesting. But from here it is just experimenting with what value you use, how many clones you get inside of the cloner, and what kind of shapes you're using. So just for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to stick with these values right now. So what I also did on the example is adding some mode text in this. That's quite easy to do. And I'm also going to add the same material on that one maybe. And one more thing you could see on the video is that there were some kind of glitchy lines floating around. So what these actually were, were also sweep objects. But I want a straight line instead of a circle in this case. So the easiest way to get a straight line is actually using a helix. So get one. And we're going to set the end angle to zero and that way we have a straight line. You can also increase the height of it, like so course we need to rotate it and now we want this inside of a sweep object again like the other one so this way we have some kind of line I'm going to make a different material for this which is also a luminance material but just a little darker it depends on what colors you're using Okay, now one final thing I want to do to make this move around like it's crazy going glitchy and stuff is right clicking on this and adding a vibrate tag and we want this to move around. So let's set some high values, maybe something like 1000 centimeters even and increase the frequency to make it go faster. That way it will go all over the place. Let's also add a camera to make it look more 2D actually. What you want to do is adding the camera and let's reset all the values of the position and the rotation. So let's look through it and zoom out. That way you have a perfect centered camera. So one more thing I would like to show you guys which isn't exactly something you should use or something, but which I found interesting, is if you add some kind of inside, for example, and you're going to MoGraph, you could add this in a cloner, but you actually have these kind of radial clone tools or the other clone tools, but I like the radial one. And if you click on this one and drag, you can create some very interesting patterns. And you can also keep clicking on other spots and it will start a new cloner at that side. So if you would add some sweep objects inside of this, you would get some very interesting patterns that could be some kind of background to you. But I'm just going to get rid of this. And that brings me to one last point I wanted to show you guys, and that is how you add some glitchy effects to the camera. And this is actually the easiest part to do. So we are just going to animate the camera, which you will always do by creating three keyframes. So let's randomly start here and create a keyframe, a new keyframe at the next frame, and the third one and the middle one will be the one that is offset so maybe you can zoom in and move it around 
that way. Let's play this. I'm going to disable the cloner so it is rendering faster. You can see we get this small glitch at this point. So you can actually make some copies of this, but you want one exactly at the end. So that way the problem of it not being very loopable is being fixed in some kind of way. And of course we can make it different on every middle keyframe. So let's play this once more. So you can see that it's pretty easy to do. It is up to you what you do with this, how many times you glitch, how dramatic you make it look. These were just some techniques to get you started with some kind of stuff like this. I know this was a quick one, but it isn't exactly rocket science. There's nothing specific you should end up with. So I just hope this was inspiring to you and you can start making your own stuff. Also, as always, you can download these files on Patreon. And apart from that, I hope you learned something new today and liked this video. If you did, make sure to be subscribed so I can catch you in the next video.